Monk empty here. You're constantly creating reality with your mind. Who you are and what's happening in your life, everyone in your life, how rich you are, the relationships you have is a constant manifestation of what you've been doing here. That's what I want to talk about today. People have been calling this the secret. People have been calling this manifestation. It's just the nature of how things work. Some people think it's this weird thing that you have to believe. It's not something that you have to believe. You're doing it all the time. It's just becoming conscious of it and harnessing it. It's kind of like if you're constantly riding your life on a horse and you never realize that you're riding a horse and then one day you realize, oh, I'm riding a horse and I can steer it wherever I want. It's not like you have to believe that there's a horse out there that you can go ride and take you into the horizon. No, everyone is manifesting. You're always getting what you believe. You're always becoming what you think. And you only get and you only do what you believe deep down in your subconscious. It's really just the science of the subconscious mind. And I've been thinking about this and experimenting with this in so many different ways. So let's make this really practical. You are, you are getting the results in relationships based on what you believe, based on what you think. If you think that you're lonely, you're going to be lonely. If you think that you're shy, you're going to be shy. The only way to change these things is to get into your subconscious. And the techniques of how to do that are so interesting. They're so fascinating. And if you read the books, Psycho-Cybernetics, Think and Grow Rich, The Law of Success. And if you read stuff like this, then you're going to understand the workings of the subconscious mind and how to create reality for yourself. We're at the park. I just ate some oats and goji berries and raisins. And uh, this is the setup. And uh, you know what we'll do? We'll walk around and talk about this because this is going to be a nice video. <clears throat> this is going to be a nice series that we're going to do because this is the essence of everything. If you can understand your subconscious mind, then you have understood the secret of how to get what you want in life. You can get money, you can get relationships, you can become different at your core, you can enjoy your day more, you can transform your mind and make more friends. You can become whatever you want, anything is possible. If you can imagine it and feel the reality and believe it, then it becomes possible and it becomes your reality. Because that's what's already happening. Think about this. This is not, you already know this deep down. I don't have to convince you of this. Whatever you're already thinking about is what you get in life. Whatever you really core believe about yourself, your identity is what you attract. Whether you think you're smart, then you're gonna behave in ways that you're gonna learn more. And you're gonna become smart. Your level of money, the belief of what you can and can't do, your belief about how you get along with people, these are things that are largely unexamined. And that's the key point, is that many of these areas are in your subconscious that you've never looked at. And you've never examined, you never created. You created it unconsciously. And it's been working out its beliefs. So I wanna make this real practical and personal. For the longest time I thought I was shy. For the longest time I thought um, I wasn't good with girls. For the longest time I thought uh, well, I actually, I believe that I was smart my whole life because I got good grades. Um, but a lot of my life I spent thinking that um, I'm not rich. A lot of time, man, all these areas, you literally have unexamined beliefs and opinions in your subconscious mind creating your reality that you have not examined in so many ways. And once you identify where you want to change, there's tools, there's subconscious mental tools and procedures so you can re reprogram that program. And that's what will start to create your new reality. 
okay? So there is a science to it. This is called parapsychology. This is not hippy dippy woo woo secret. This is what's already happening. <clears throat> so I just wanna hammer home. The more conscious you become in what beliefs you actually hold, the more you can, the more you can change it. And so what do you want? Ask yourself, what do you want? There's so many things that you can examine. Do you want more happiness in your day during your work? Do you want more freedom? Do you want more money? Do you want more happy people around you? Do you want to be a happy person? Who do you want to be? Start identifying and creating this in your mind. You remember we're talking about thought power, Swami Sivananda. You create your reality by your thoughts and everyone has a different thought world that's determining how they feel, how they perceive. When you look at somebody, do you know how many things happen about your identity, who you think you are, if you're worthy to talk to that person, if you have something to offer to that person, your perceptions of that person, if you judge them? Do you know how many hundreds of things are happening when you even just look at somebody that you probably haven't examined as deep as you should? Because these all tell deep stories about your subconscious mind and they're determining your relationship to not only that person, but you do this with everything. You do this with nature. You do this with food. Every time you look at something, your subconscious mind is putting a lens over your eyes and it's interpreting it through that lens. So if you think rainy days are sad, boom, you're gonna be sad on rainy days. You've never questioned it. If you, <laughs> you can change that. You can say, what a beautiful rainy day. The plants are getting what they need so that we can all survive. A rainy day is such a comfy atmosphere. You can relax more on a rainy day. You can drink some tea on a rainy day. See, my point here is just your subconscious mind holds and determines everything about how you feel and what you do and what you think, which determines your reality and what you're getting. It's so obvious. If you're afraid of cockroaches, you can reprogram that too. I've had cockroaches running all up and down my leg and I just laugh. I'm not afraid of cockroaches. <laughs> I'm not gonna let a program like that determine. Another big one is <clears throat> uh, people think that they have to have anxiety. If you think you have to have anxiety and that's just who you are, you do. It's true for you now because you believe it. Everything that you believe about yourself and who you are if you think you can't change it, then you're right. You just determined that. So yeah, there's a lot that we can talk of in terms of, you know, people think that they can't change. This is just who I am. I don't do that. I don't like those kind of people. I don't hang out with those kind of people. As you think, so you are. As you believe, so it will be. If you want to change it, you can, but you have to take responsibility and recognize you're either the master and you can recreate and take responsibility that, hey, your life is going exactly how you think. It's up to you. Or you can say, it's not my fault. It's not up to me. I can't influence and change it. This is just how I am. I'm traumatized. This happened to me when I was young. Okay, if you think you can't overcome it, it's true for you. You just made that true for you. If you think you can overcome it, then it's true for you. This goes deep. This goes deep. And uh, you really have to think about these things deeply and meditate on how your mind controls everything about <laughs> everything. How much you like to exercise, if you exercise, how you exercise. <laughs> Just everything. And so taking control of your subconscious mind analyzing your beliefs and meditating and actually taking time to change these things you can transform your life i'm very extroverted now i'm very articulate now i'm very happy now i used to be the opposite in so many ways how did i change it i used to be so unconfident now i'm very confident <laughs> it's so easy <laughs> I used to be very lonely. Now it's impossible for me to be lonely. All of these are just thoughts that are practiced so deeply and you can change them, but you have to really believe it. It's 
so let's talk about it. How do you change your subconscious mind? Let's talk about the main way. The main way to change your subconscious mind is to start practicing powerful cognitions where you feel in your brain, in your nervous system, a new reality about yourself and about what's possible and what you have and who you are. Because, note this, <clears throat> your brain and what you believe does not know the difference between imagination and reality. Think about this for a second. When you're dreaming, is it imagination or reality? Of course it's imagination. But does it feel like reality? Yes. And when you think about a banana or something that's very tasty to you, does your brain say, oh, that's just an imagination. I'm not gonna create saliva. No, your body responds because deep down your subconscious only knows experience. Your consciousness only records experience. Think about it. If a kid is afraid of the boogeyman, of course the boogeyman's imagination. But does that create the reality? Does that, can that create them into a fearful person? Can that create them into a paranoid person? Yes. Because imagination is what your brain perceives as reality. It's the same thing. So you can program yourself with imagination. So if you start having powerful cognitions and imagination through your imagination, and if you feel it so powerfully in your body with all your senses, your brain will start registering that as a new experience. So that's what you need. New experiences are what create new beliefs. Think about that. If you give yourself a new experience, like, think about this. Let's say you're shy. Let's say you think you're shy. If tomorrow you woke up and you had an experience that you could go in front of anybody and say and do whatever you want and you never felt shy. If you had that experience tomorrow and you just ran around not being shy, would that change your belief about yourself? Whether or not you think you're shy? Yes, it would. You'd look back and say, hey, remember that day I just went around and I wasn't shy in the least? And I was just in love with everybody? And I remember how that felt. It was so fun and liberating. And I was so expressive and I just said exactly what I thought. I felt like a little kid. I wasn't shy at all. I was the opposite. I was extroverted. I had fun being with people. <clears throat> I was excited to learn about people. I was excited to be with people. I felt loved and adored and accepted. And I felt all the friendship and I felt all the love and I felt all the laughter. And I felt all the freedom and the independence from other people's opinions. I felt it, I remember that day. I'm not shy. How could I be shy? I, I had that experience. So if you can have an experience, you will change your belief. Your subconscious will begin to change. So where this becomes a little bit more complicated is if you keep on having contrary contrary beliefs and contrary experiences you have to keep your mind focused if you can have one type of thought again and again and again and again and never contradict it and never let the opposite imagination come back up and create a contradiction then you will go in that direction but imagine if you keep on thinking one day i'm extroverted the next day you start imagining i'm introverted and then you keep on going back and forth and your imagination keeps on running, which is always happening, by the way. Just another, another way to explain it is your imagination is always creating experiences for you, which is why you're constantly manifesting what your subconscious has for you. 
So that's the most important thing is to not allow the imagination to run in the direction that you don't want it to. And it's gonna try because it's been trained this whole life to think in a certain way. And so that's the struggle. If you spent your whole life, 20, 30, 40 years, thinking that you're shy, then you're gonna have a harder time reprogramming, potentially, not guaranteed, but you may have a little bit harder time if it's more ingrained than if it's not really that ingrained. So I actually shouldn't even say that's gonna be hard. It's only as hard as, as your own psyche makes it. The more powerful you can have these new cognitions on a consistent basis, repetition, the easier it's gonna be just to create a new reality. And backing it up with reasons is also very powerful. Backing it up with reasons gives you concrete evidence of why to believe it. For example, if you think that, uh, if you think that you're shy, let's keep on using this example afraid to talk to girls, whatever. You start using this imagination process. You relax your body. This is actually how you do it. You relax your body fully. You take a, a couple very deep breaths. It's actually really good to do right before you go to sleep as you're falling asleep. A good way to relax your body is to go from toes to head, contracting every group of muscles on both sides of your body for three seconds and then relaxing. Do this for each set of muscles up into your head. This is so important. Don't overlook this. You have to be in a relaxed state so that you don't have your conscious mind um, jumping around, distracting you. You're not focused. You keep on um, bringing up different contradictions. No, you have to be in a relaxed state. It's very important or else the mental cognition won't be as pure, strong, focused, okay? So relax yourself. And then you have to see yourself in the first person, which means right now you're in the first person, okay? You can look at your hands, you see your hands, okay? So in other words, you're in your body, looking through your eyeballs. You're not looking at yourself like somebody else looking at you, okay? You're not watching yourself as a cartoon character. You are in your body experiencing, okay? That's so important. Don't forget this. First person. So look at your hands, look at your feet. Look at your hands, look at your feet. And then just start imagining exactly what you want to have, what you want to be, and start doing exactly what you want to do down to the exact detail. Really feel every single detail. So with our example, you'd see yourself at school. You look at your hands, you look at your feet, you look around and everyone that you see, you start smiling, you start feeling good thoughts of, oh, I wonder how they're doing. Oh, I can't wait to talk to them. Oh, I'm so happy to see John. Oh, I'm so happy to see Gavin. Oh, I'm so happy to see Ashwin. Oh, wow, I can't wait to talk to them. I'm so happy to see them. They probably have something really funny to say. Start thinking all these things, start feeling all these things. Then walk up to them, walk up to them, see their face, hug them. Um, do this, do this to your friends, do this, see yourself interacting in a non-shy way. Asking them how they're doing, how you doing, man? Oh, what'd you do yesterday? You have a good breakfast? What'd you eat for breakfast? Oh, what'd you do yesterday? Oh, that's cool. Oh, how'd that feel for you? Just see yourself interacting exactly how you want to interact. See yourself in the perfect, exactly how you want to be and just feel it. Don't let any doubts or mumbo jumbo in your brain come up and say, what is this? This isn't gonna work. Don't let any of that BS come up. Those are the contradicting thoughts that will negate the power if you let them free. No, just experience. If you can just experience, your subconscious mind will change. And then because that subconscious mind changed, you'll start behaving differently. And because you're behaving and thinking differently, your results will change. And then eventually, whatever you're imagining will come to pass. That's the gist of it. That is the gist of it. It isn't some weird supernatural force that will make it happen. No, it's th the working of how reality works. It's you're literally just becoming the engineer of how reality works, okay? It's not some spooky, weird, spiritual, unexplainable thing. It's the mechanics of reality. <laughs>
you're just changing <laughs> you're just changing your subconscious mind which changes every thought that you have which changes every action that you have which changes what's attracted to you and what you're attracted to which which determines your habits which determines your character which determines your destiny that's the science it's just it's that easy it's that simple but <laughs> the challenge is not doubting it trusting the process doing the process i mean you're already doing it <laughs> the challenge is the challenge is becoming aware enough so that you're conscious of what you're actually constantly thinking about um, a lot of times we're not conscious of what our imagination is doing we don't take the time to change it we just want to uh, watch Netflix or whatever if you don't take the time to change it then what you created will keep on going in perpetuity and you'll keep on getting what you had or you can take into your hands your mind your imagination your subconscious and start creating a new mind you destroy the old by creating the new Oh, I got some calls coming on right now. Gavin, sorry, I can't talk right now. Yeah, you don't have to destroy the old subconscious impressions of negativity. You just create new ones, the opposite ones. Don't resist the bad, create the good. You can't destroy the bad. You have to just overcome it with good. So just imagine exactly how you wanna be in every single area. Read Psycho-Cybernetics, Maximal Maltz. This is, this is not some hippy-dippy thing. This is scientifically proven stuff. This has been used for centuries. Athletes use it, scientists use it. Everybody in every single walk of life uses it. Average everyday people use it to overcome subconscious insecurities. Um, a little bit about this book, I guess would be interesting to give this a little bit more credibility. This doctor popularized this idea in the West. He was a plastic surgeon. And he noticed that people had these subconscious insecurities about themselves. They just think a certain part of their body was wrong, right? And so sometimes when they went to him, he did plastic surgery, he fixed it. And they'd still just think that they're still not perfect. Like if they're fat, he takes away the fat, they still think that they're fat. While other people, you know, he takes away the fat and their subconscious mind is like, oh, okay, great, I'm better. So he got very curious about, huh, why do certain people still have this inner insecurity even though I fixed the outside? And so he started understanding the power of the subconscious mind. These people in their subconscious mind, they still had that belief that their nose is too big even though their nose literally wasn't that big anymore after the surgery. And so he started studying how to reprogram the subconscious and he started giving them these exercises. And he was able to help these people overcome their inward insecurities, which they couldn't have fixed just by morphing the external situation. See, he changed a lot of the times how people felt about themselves without even giving them surgery after using these exercises. See, because if you think you have a big nose, Maybe it's just you believe you have a big nose because, I don't know, maybe somebody said it to you before. Maybe you just thought about it yourself. You have this belief that you have a big nose and you don't know how to change it. <laughs> Other people might not even be thinking that about you. <laughs> it might just be you thinking that you have a big nose and that people don't like you because you have a big nose. <laughs> this is seriously what goes on in people's minds and subconsciouses. This is what he talks about in the book. Literally... Uh, certain people will think that they're unapproachable or ugly and they have these horrible self-image problems and uh, You know, you can fix it from the inside out You can imagine all these neuroses away by imagining the opposite. This is clinical stuff guys This is clinical stuff. He had them imagine them going up to the opposite sex and being accepted loved and nothing even about their nose you know, it's so much deeper than just the superficial problem that we think things are most of the time. So, um, I'm gonna wrap up this video now. That's enough to chew on for now. This is, uh, this is 
part two, thought power. We're gonna continue this on. There's a lot more to talk about, about the subconscious mind manifesting, how the mind controls everything about your destiny and thoughts are the power that create everything and move everything. And that you can change everything about your reality just through your thoughts. So it's good to be a watchman of your thoughts, to study your own mind. What does Socrates say? Know thyself. Start being very curious about these things and it'll, it'll pay off. This is where the juice in life comes from. So I'm excited. I love this kind of stuff. Um, my personal stories, I've been able to change everything about my personality. I'm not a depressed person. I'm a joyful person now. I'm a very attractive, happy person. I have friends coming to me from everywhere. I'm creating exactly what I want and I feel like I can do anything. Why wouldn't you be able to be? There's people out there doing it. There's no reason why you can't do it. <laughs> there are people just like you. It's just their mind and you can change your mind. This knowledge has blessed us and now we can change our subconscious minds. Awareness is a miracle. <laughs> this knowledge is a miracle. <sighs> Isn't it amazing? Anything can happen. You can do anything. You can have anything. You're so powerful. You're so able. You're a human being. The power of your mind is incredible. And you know what helps with this? Meditation, yoga, taking mastery over your mind. We're gonna talk about yoga next. Actually, yoga has a process of manifestation called Chit Shakti meditation. It's exactly what we just talked about. They just call it Chit Shakti. If you're interested, I'm gonna post in the description YouTube videos where you can go and do Sadhguru's Chit Shakti meditation for manifesting the life that you want. Check it out. You'll see exactly, um, it's exactly what we just talked about. Next, we're gonna talk about yoga, mastering the minds so that you can create and become one direction, focused, so that you're not creating what you don't want. You're a conscious being, you're a creator, and you're creating anyways. Take control, become the master of your destiny. Mon comme